This presentation is about Simon's classification of mal occlusion. This is another method of classifying mal occlusion, which was proposed by Simon in 1930s. Now, since the growth of the face and jaws occur in three planes of space, that is height, width, and depth, abnormalities can also occur in any one or more of these planes. So Simon's classification relates the denture to the face and cranium in these three planes of space that is the Frankfurt horizontal plane, the orbital plane and the mid sagittal plane. Now what are these planes? The Frankfurt horizontal plane or the eye ear plane is determined by drawing a straight line through the margin of the bony orbit directly under the pupil of the eye to the upper margin of the external auditory meter meters, that is the notch above the tragus of the ear. This plane is used to determine deviations in the height of the dental arches and teeth in relation to the face and cranium. The orbital plane. It is a perpendicular to the eye ear plane at the margin of the bony orbit directly under the pupil of the eye. This plane is used to determine sagittal deviations of the dental arches and also the axial inclination of the teeth to the face and cranium. Now coming to mid sagittal plane, it is determined by points approximately 1.5 cm apart on mid sagittal on mid palatal raphae. The raphae or median plane passes through these two points at right angles to the Frankfurt horizontal plane. This plane is used to determine the deviations in the general form and width of the dental arches and the axial inclination of teeth in relation to the midline of the palate and the head. In normal arch relationship, according to Simon, the orbital plane passes through the distal aspect of the canine. This is also called as the law of the canine. Now the classification of malocclusion according to Simon is based on the following. Deviations from the mid sagittal plane. In this the arch form and inclination of tooth axis are determined. The malocclusion can be classified as follows contraction that is a part or whole dental arch is contracted towards the raphae or the median plane and the abnormality may be mandibular alveolar dental anterior posterior unilateral or bilateral distraction a part or whole of the dental arch is wider than usual from the median plane. Now, deviations from the Frankfurt horizontal plane. Angle between Frankfurt horizontal and occlusal plane. The form of the occlusal curve and inclination of teeth axis are determined from this plane. The malocclusion can be of the following types. Attraction. That is the distance between the occlusal plane and the Frankfurt horizontal plane is comparatively shorter than normal. This distance is as a rule normally shorter in young and on, than in older persons and in some ethnic groups. Abstraction. Abstraction is the distance between the occlusal plane and the Frankfurt horizontal plane is comparatively longer than the normal. So these were the deviations from the Frankfurt horizontal plane. Now what happens when the deviations from the orbital plane? Now the deviations from the orbital plane in this plane, sagittal symmetry and inclination of the axis of the teeth are determined. According to this, the malocclusion can be either protraction or retraction. Protraction is when teeth, one or both dental arches or the jaws are forwardly placed and in retraction the teeth one or both of the dental arches or the jaws are too far retruded 
the orbital plane passes too far anteriorly to the canines deviations of dental arches in relation to the orbital plane according to simon may occur as follows both the jaws may be in normal relation to each other the upper jaw may be normal and the lower jaw distal the upper jaw may be normal and the lower jaw may be mesially placed 